start a new radio show, you have an idea of what you want the show to be. And then very quickly, you hand it over to the good people that listen, and they kind of, it's like uh, Play-Doh, and they kind of hand it back to you, go, no, it's a bit like that. And you go, okay, what about a bit like this? And you, and you shape it together. That's what I love about radio, is how it's malleable, and you can define it as much as I can. And so one of the things I've really loved about coming to Australia and Melbourne is how great the callers are. The stories we get, people keep saying this to me, I've always done very interactive radio, and I love hearing people's stories, but here that's really increased a hell of a lot. And one of my favorite calls, I still remember it now, and so much of the radio I do, I forget. I have like kind of a show amnesia. This is one of those stories I will always remember. We were simply doing a phone in on Five Top of Tuesday about what you lost in the divorce. And it was one of those phone calls where if we'd have sat around in the pub brainstorming what people would have said, we would never have guessed what Jenny called in and told us. It was one of my favorite calls ever, not just on the show here in 20 years of doing breakfast radio. Good morning, Christian. Good morning, Jenny. So what did you lose in the breakup? Uh, the TV antenna. <laughs> my uh... <laughs> You gotta you gotta tell us more. What do you mean the TV antenna? My idiot husband, well he bought it, so he, it was just fair that he took it. Didn't matter that the kids couldn't watch T V. No. He got up on the roof while we weren't home. My neighbour rang the police. What an a-hole! <laughs> Why he got up on the roof? So what happened to the TV antenna? Did you keep well, it? Well, as, apparently, as he was getting down, he broke it. <laughs> oh, oh my word! <laughs> what kind of lot have you got, all devil that woman? For ha. Nothing. <laughs> all that is for nothing. So I let him keep the antenna in the breakup, and I got Foxtel. <laughs> <laughs> what has happened? What has happened what in the last you idiot. Oh, okay. you idiot. All right, Jenny. All right. <laughs> the joke's on me because we got back together again later and he enjoyed the foxtail very much. So oh, you, you're, really. back, you're back with this guy? I was. He's dead now. Oh. But I did get oh. back with him, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. He, didn't fall oh, off. No. he didn't fall off the roof, did he, trying to get back? <laughs> no, he was pushed. Oh, and let's leave it there. No, All right. <laughs> no, no, she's we joking. Will we ever get a bunch of calls like the no, ones we've just had? No, let's go. <laughs> Jenny, thanks for the call, okay? <laughs> Here's another one of my uh, favourite moments of the show this year. When a man calls in and starts telling him a story about seeing a celebrity in an unusual location. He first of all says Mick Jagger. I'm, I'm listening already. I'm a big Stones fan. And then we go into a toilet. I literally have my hand of the fader getting ready to get rid of this guy because I thought it might be crude or odd. And it should have been, but the way this man told the story, it didn't feel rude or odd. But again, was one of those memorable stories about seeing a celebrity's... My, my story goes back to 1969 when Mick Jagger was making the film Ned Kelly in country New South Wales in a wow. town called Braidwood. Yeah. Now, he'd been uh, he'd been firing a, a uh, false pistol uh, the day before and it backfired and it burnt his hand and he had this great big bandage on his hand. So uh, we were over there trying to play extras in the movie for 10 bucks a day. Anyway, uh, I went to the toilet and Mick was there and because he had his hand bandaged up, uh, he asked me if I could undo his flight. Oh, board. come he on! No in, way! Peter. No, no, Peter, come <laughs> yeah. on now. No. I've polished the story many a time, but you don't say that Mick Jagger asked a bit about getting his old Jagger out. No way. He he, he did, and you know no. how Mick is re renowned for having a bit of a big bulge in his pants. <laughs> Where's the story uh, we, going? We, 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 we always thought that he had a rubber hose down there, but I can tell you, after undoing his fly in the toilet, <laughs> it ain't no rubber hose, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's a true story. It's actually really hard for me to pick um, some of my favourite moments, and I don't mean that to sound like uh, so it's been so wonderful what I've done on the new show here in Melbourne, but more about some of the stuff that uh, you've done, because those are my highlights, those moments that you do. Um, but one for me that I will always remember from the first sort of six months, the launch of the show really in 2018, will be One Last Dream. Welcome to One Last Dream. This is a competition where I'm asking you to reunite your old bands. What One Last Dream 
gave me, and I hope it gave people that enjoyed listening to it as well, is so often on radio, it's quick, it's it's a name, it's ephemeral. There's another show tomorrow. I'm I'm replaceable. You're not hanging on my every word, despite what we like to think. And one last dream to me felt like we created a proper um, a moment. And that wasn't about me, it was about that band coming together and how they talked about what that meant to them. And he articulated it, Dell did, so well. I could still start crying now about it. And I mean, we played this clip out and how he was talking about how he was listening back to the album that he made in the 90s with his daughter who's 17. Hey, this is Dale from Bungalow. I listened to some of the tracks from our album for the first time in many years with my daughter in the car the other day and had tears in my eyes. This is Chloe, Dale's daughter. Music is something that brings my dad and I together. We record songs together and we play together. And I think in some way, dad gave up on his dream so we could focus on my dreams oh. in music. So I think it would be really awesome if Dad could have one last go at his dream. I hadn't listened to that before playing it. I'm crying listening to that. Jack's got to this noise. <laughs> Producers warn me. I'm live on air. We're all willing up. Listen to that. You just don't get enough of that in life. And what it does, it brought us all together when we listen to that. And so often in life, we're reminded of what our differences are and how divided we are. And sometimes we have these pure little human moments. And I wish I could make them every day, but I can't. I can't make them, they can just happen. And it brought us all together, we were connected. And that is why, in fact, pick one highlight from this year is One Last Dream. It wasn't just about the bands, it's about what's in here, about what our passion is in life and what our meaning is in life. So there you go. Over the last couple of weeks on the show, we've been doing this big competition called One Last Dream. Now they're nervous because they've got jobs. However, in a couple of moments, they're gonna be a rock band and you're gonna make them feel like a rock band. Once again, I'd like to thank Gold, uh, who've been just so amazing in, in helping us uh, achieve this sort of goal. The best thing that, that was uh, the, the outcome of this, it was really, at one point we were just in a rehearsal room, we were just laughing and joking like we did 25 years ago, and I just realised oh, it's just so great to have great mates around you. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Bungalow. It's amazing. It was just everything just went um, like clockwork. You know, it was just it was so so much nervousness and anticipation, and uh, just it just was the best experience ever. All Dad talks about is music, and he loves it so much, and to just see. Finally, got to play for so many people, and he deserves it so much, and he's so good, and he, so happy. he inspires me. Every day. <laughs> just so, so much nervousness and anticipation, and uh, just, just was the best experience ever.